guys, Riley here with Hudson Motors today with our newest giveaway truck. This is our 1981 Toyota pickup, 22R, five-speed manual, 31 inch tires. This thing is so, so, so cool. We're super excited about it. We love doing these smaller truck giveaways alongside of our big diesel truck giveaways, but this thing might be the king of all small pickups. It's just freaking rad. I'm super excited to show it to you guys today. In this video, we're gonna go over this truck, all the goodies that are on it, all the things that we've done. So if you're just stumbling across this video here at Hodson Motors, we build and restore classic trucks just like this one. And then we give them away through our website, hodsonmotors.com. You go on our site, you spend some money, you get some stuff, buy a shirt, a hat, maybe some tools, maybe even something cool like a flashlight like this bad boy right here. You buy something like that, you get entries into win. Every $5 you spend from now until August 20th at midnight is one entry into winning this bad boy. Now, if you're watching this video after August 20th at midnight, this giveaway is closed, but we're always giving away something else that's really, really, really cool and classic like this. So uh, check us out, see what else we're giving away. Subscribe to us here on YouTube, check us out on our Instagram and go to our site to see what we got going on. So without further ado, let's hop into this truck, go over all the good stuff, show you the ins, the outs, the engine bay, and what it's like to drive this bad boy. First thing you're gonna notice, it is a white truck with those awesome, awesome, awesome sunset orange stripes. I call them the turd stripes, like TRD, Toyota Racing Development turd, but they're just so cool, they look so freaking rad. So these are from a company in Australia, these decals that makes these bad boys and ships them out to the United States. So they're really, really, really cool. It gives it that vintage 70s, 80s look. This is a 1981 truck. This truck was produced from 1979 to 1983, and it is what is considered a third generation Toyota pickup. This generation and the fourth generation Toyota pickup are probably the most popular Toyotas to collect and modify and all that kind of stuff. And so we'll show you, there's some parts from fourth gens on this third gen, and we'll kind of talk about all that kind of good stuff. However, this truck started off its life as a base Toyota pickup short bed four wheel drive. And we've done some extras, some goodies from the SR5, the upper scale model to make this truck nicer and cool. First things first in the suspension department, it's got a little lift kit on it to fit some 31 inch Milestar Patagonia XTs. When Sterling and I flew down to San Diego to pick this truck up, we drove it like five and a half hours home and our biggest complaint definitely was the old tires. It had some old Goodyears on it, mud terrains that were so loud. So we swapped these out for these Milestar XTs. We put these on like almost every truck. They are the quietest off-road all-terrain tire on the market. They're so quiet, which in my opinion for a classic truck is like the, the most important thing on a classic because we know when you have a truck that's valuable and old like this, you're not gonna go beat on it every single day and off-road it. Maybe you do, if you win this truck, it's your truck to do whatever you want with it. But a truck of this nice is gonna be like a daily that you go do some trails. And most importantly is you gotta be able to enjoy it and you don't wanna hear your tires howling all day long. So we put these nice, quiet, love these tires to the back. Uh, these are wrapped around some steelies, some black steelies. These came on the truck when we bought it, but we powder coated them black. And from doing this trail, they're all dusty. So you can't tell, but it's brand new powder coat and they look super, super, super nice. You'll see that in some other pictures that we post on the Instagram. And some other stuff that we do on YouTube later with this truck. You'll see the powder coat looks really, really nice. Along with that powder coat, we powder coated the mirrors, powder coated this front bumper. This is the factory front bumper. We did a lot of work up here. So let me show you what's going on. So normally on these Toyota pickups, you would have an orange turn signal down here in the bumper, which I always thought looked kind of dumb. And so we moved the turn signal, we changed the wiring to make the turn signal our corner light because you have a corner light right there. It doesn't make any sense to have two corner lights right next to each other. So this is now your blinker, which looks way better. And then we put some nice little LEDs for some fog lights down in the bumper. We think it looks cool. Just a little bit of modernization along with your LED headlights. These are super, super bright. Great. We put them on all our classics because they're just the brightest headlights for your classic. They fit perfect. They plug and play. They're great. Painted the grill up black, classic grill, but made it all, blacked it all out, restored these emblems, redid the red on the emblems to make them very, very, very nice. Now the hood's a great example of how nice and shiny this paint is. The reason why we bought this truck, we needed a truck that we could do a lot of cool stuff with but not be bottlenecked by paint. This truck has a recent fresh paint job, but it was just, it, you know, it's a decent paint job. I wouldn't say it's a bad paint job at all. Um, it's not like a crazy $20,000 paint job. However, it was nice. And uh, as soon as we got it, Sterling started color sanding, got this thing color sanded and making it just look so shiny and so reflective. Beads off water like nobody's business and it's just absolutely wicked cool. Coming down the side here, we got new antenna, really nice little billet antenna. So did new antenna, we got our mirrors. We So these are the factory mirror brackets, which we didn't want to change and have to drill new holes and do that kind of stuff. So we just restored these, powder coated these up, made them look nice, got new mirror heads for them. Our old mirror heads were just absolutely seized. So we got new mirror heads. They're looking nice. And I will say, we've restored Chevys, Fords, Dodges, Jeeps, to internationals, um, and a few Toyotas. Every truck requires a million and a half trips to the parts store to get your truck back roadworthy and ready to go and restored. People are always commenting, oh, if you would give away this truck, 
you wouldn't have to spend that much money because they never break it. It's like, guys, you don't get it. When you're restoring trucks, it's different. Yes, Toyotas are very dependable. You can get in this bad boy every single day, crank it up. It's gonna fire every day and never give you an issue. I shouldn't say never. We've had we had a couple little mechanical issues with the truck that we fixed, we will address later. I will say one of the downsides to restoring a Toyota like this is there is no aftermarket support available for these bad boys. Very, very, very little out there in terms of new parts. So like new door handles are nearly impossible to find. You really only get like some lights, some reflectors, you know, maybe a few interior parts, but most of the stuff, if you're restoring one of these bad boys, is gonna be new old stock or nicely used parts off eBay. And that's what I found. It's really hard. These are not an easy resto. This is not, you just go to LMC truck because you've got a Chevy square body and you buy every single part you could ever need. It's not that way. These require a lot of time and patience. Let's talk about suspension just a little bit now. In this generation Toyota pickup, there is very little in terms of suspension upgrades out there on the market. You've got leaf springs, you've got taller leaf springs and shorter leaf springs, and you've got shocks. And so this thing has some taller leaf springs on it. And you know, it rides like a 1970s and 1980s truck. I'm just gonna say that. You'll see in the video as we drove up here, you know, they're just, there's just not a lot out there besides going out and getting like custom softer leaf springs made or doing four link and coilovers, you know, to, to really help. However, just to do this little trail was a lot of fun. Once we got through the really washboard stuff, it did just fine. I know these are some of the most beloved four wheelers of all time. People just love these trucks and love modifying and making them better. I think people love them regardless. And you just know that it rides, you know, kind of like a little short wheelbase bucking Bronco. Not nearly as bad as like one ton pickups do off-road, but we did a Jeep Comanche uh, earlier this year. That thing off-road was leaps and bounds better than this truck, but for a daily off-roader, go do some trails and stuff like that, it's gonna do everything just, just, just fine. In the bed here, we did a full-size spare tire, another steel wheel, uh, another mile style Patagonia XT. Um, it's got a nice little spray and bed liner. And then we did this cool spare tire mount from Fabtech. So these are cool, universal, readily available, and they just bolt down to your bed floor. So those are freaking rad. And they hold your tire in nice. And I think it looks cool. The short bed proportions on this truck are freaking rad. I love that it's a short bed. And I just think it looks like a little toy. And then to have the cool little spare tire in the bed is really cool as well. Walking down the back here, uh, we've got new lenses, new bezels, all that kind of good stuff. And then we did the Toyota in the orange to match the side, stripes on the side. No rear bumper. Uh, these trucks have like a factory roll pan, which just looks really cool. With just these little bumperettes, which is really nice as well. So that being said, let's go inside the truck where we did a ton of work for this bad boy and uh, show you what's all in there. Now I'm a six foot tall, 200 pound guy, pretty average. Let me show you how well I fit. Oh, I think I fit great. I have plenty of headroom. My legs are nice and comfortable. I reach the pedals easy. So that's all great. Again, when we were driving home from San Diego, I sat in the passenger seat for half the drive. I fell asleep. My legs were fully extended. It was great. Again, a lot of people are worried because if they're taller, they're not gonna be able to fit. You have plenty of headroom. I think if you're 6'2", six, 6'3", six, you might be pushing it. The average guy is gonna fit in here just, just, just fine. But let's talk about all the goodness that is this interior. When we got it, it was very mismatched. It had some blue pieces on the dash, a light blue headliner, you know, your black seat. This seat is new upholstery, and this is an fourth gen seat, so an 84 to 88 pickup. But the seat fits in and bolts in perfectly fine, and it's far more comfortable. These third gen trucks had two different seats. You get a bench seat or bucket seats. If you had an SR5, you had buckets, and the buckets were comfortable, but the base, bench seat had no lumbar support and uh, they were terribly uncomfortable, terribly bad on your back. However, they fixed that in the fourth gen truck and these have great lumbar support and are super comfortable. I have a bad back. If I sit in the same spot or stand in the same spot for too long, it starts to kill me. And so that's why I'm always pacing. In a bench seat like this, I was comfortable for six hours, five and a half hours straight, just sitting there. You can adjust, you can move around, you can get comfortable, which is great about, about a bench seat. I love that about a bench seat. But they're comfortable, you got a nice armrest and it's just a great seat. In here, we've got fresh carpet. We've got new headliner, but it was baby blue. Like I told you, they put it factory replacement headliner in but we got headliner dye and dyed our headliner black we did all of our trim in here in black new seat belts from retro belt that are super nice and super you know really comfortable it's always, i always mention this in every video sucks to have old seat belts in a classic they're crunchy it makes you feel like you're driving a piece of crap up here in the dash department so this is an sr5 steering wheel which i think is the coolest freaking steering wheel with those three horn buttons this was a very japanese thing to do you'll see chevy loves which were built by a zuzu that they'll, they'll have something very similar to this with these three buttons on the horn which is just super cool. You be holding on the bottom, honk your horn, holding on the left, honk your horn, just freaking rad. We have the wood grain dash, and then down here, this is something I'm pretty proud of. We've got our vintage air under dash system. This is a great, great, great system, which we're gonna put a review out on in a couple of weeks, talking about why you need this in your classic. If you're trying to do a budget air conditioning system, this is the best budget AC system. It blows so cold and moves so much air. For being such a small box, 
It is absolutely killer. I love this box. Now, this box only comes in mother of pearl and engine turned in either black or chrome, but it clashed against our other wood grains. We found some vinyl wood grain that was remotely close to the factory wood grain. We pulled off that mother of pearl faceplate and we made our own so it would match and look really nice, which I'm really stoked on. Uh, we've got our nice dash pad with no, well, one little tiny crack up here, but really you can't tell, but nice black dash pad. We made this cubby, we 3D printed this cubby. My 3D printer is just too small and so we had to print it in two pieces, but this is a little prototype. I'm never gonna sugarcoat things in these videos. So if you see that, you see like it's split in two pieces, you're just gonna take this prototype and send it off to my buddy who has a bigger 3D printer. He could print us in one piece, but for now we weren't gonna postpone a video or have a big gaping hole in there so we just did it as is but it's nice to take your phone and toss your phone in there while you're driving and be just dandy and have plenty of space probably fit two phones in there. so that's great as well we've got our retro sound vintage radio so this is a bluetooth radio digital radio hook it up to your phone but looks great these are some very similar to the sr5 knobs back in the day so we picked something like that again just nice and black not a lot of chrome gone on in here just around the bezels these are the fresh air vents that look like they'd be ac vents but they're actually really cool and they pipe a lot of good fresh air in. And so if you're living in a cooler area you know, of the country, it doesn't really work very well in Las Vegas in the summertime. But when we were on the freeway, driving this baby home in California with some nice cool air, you open those fresh air vents and they move a lot of air. It's actually pretty nice. So those are killer as well. We left those in, we thought that was really nice. We've got new six and a half inch speakers from Retro Sounds down in the kick panels, tucked up in there nice and tight. Um, down here underneath in kind of its factory location is the SR5 voltmeter and oil pressure gauge. This is a goofy location for it, but it's kind of famous if you see the SR5, they had this second gauge pod down below. We thought, let's freaking do it. So we sunk that down below, mounted it to the bottom of our AC unit, and we're all good and dandy. dandy. Got our factory shift boot with a new shift boot for the for the shifter, and then this is all the factory piece and setup. New shift knob and all that kind of stuff. So it looks really nice, feels really nice, feels brand new, but is all still very, you know, factory original. Another really cool thing on this truck has got to be the gauge bezel and the gauge cluster. So we try to swap this truck to a SR5 gauge cluster with the tachometer and everything built into it. Just wasn't gonna happen. The ribbon cables were different. It was gonna require just a ton of wiring work and it was gonna kind of look like crap and look old. So we said, screw it, let's do something nicer. So we built up this, this gauge bezel, welded this baby up, fitted it in there, put in our water temperature gauge, our fuel level, and then we have this cool like three and three eighths gauge for speedometer and tachometer in there as well. So that's really, really, really cool. And it works great. Sunk in two little LED lights for the turn signals and uh, it's off to the race. And then in the door department, we've got these new door panels, new door cars that they made, um, little distressed leather wrap up top, door card below. Again, this was one of the reasons why we bought the truck is because we didn't have to take it to upholstery. Upholstery was kind of done. It just needed a lot of finishing on the inside. So this came when we bought it. They're nice and works out perfect. Manual windows, they go up and down. Everything works perfectly proper, just like they should. Uh, new black sun visors up there and everything works out great. So you might be looking at this and saying, hey, I know for a fact that these Toyotas have the really cool parking brake lever pull right here. And this truck had it when we bought it. However, we wanted to mount this AC unit. You'll see the dash drops right here. We didn't want to mount the dash over this way and have a gap. So we said, okay, we got to ditch the parking brake. And this is the one thing that's not finished on the truck current. We have an electronic parking brake setup coming, which are really cool. They pull your parking brake cables and they mount up discreetly underneath your frame. And then you just have a push button parking brake. And it's nice because Toyota left us with like from the factory with an extra spot, like with a little Toyota plug. So right there is where we'll mount our parking brake switch. It's gonna fill that hole perfectly and look super nice. Um, as well, we've got our switch right here. Just for now, this is very temporary. So you might be seeing this in the video. It's just temporary, don't flame me. But this is our switch for our lights in the front, for our fog lights. So, we're gonna get a matching switch to go over here on the other side, it'll be the same switch. But that's the only thing that's kind of unfinished on the truck currently right now. But our parking brake switch will go right there, it will activate our electronic parking brake and it will be just fine. So with all that being said, interior's great, I love the interior, but let's go pop the hood and go see that little, uh, that little famous 22R. All right, go under the hood. Now, nothing super impressive under here. This is a factory will pass smog in your state, even if you live in California. When we bought it, the guy smogged it just before we bought it. So this will pass smog in California. This is a 50 state smog legal 22R. So it's nothing crazy. This has the factory Eisen carb still on it. Runs and drives so good, starts so easy. Everything works like it should. I know there's a lot of hatred for the Eisen carb because it's a complicated carburetor. It's like an in-between carb and fuel injection system online. We leave it as factories, we can leave it 
just because that way everyone can participate no matter what state they live in. And if you win and you're in a state that doesn't need the, all the factory vacuum lines and all the smog equipment, all that kind of stuff, then down the road, you could go and modify it, make it better and do a better carb and all that kind of stuff. We keep it factory so that everyone could participate. We don't exclude anybody from that. But again, 22R, this is 147,000 miles on this thing. Runs like an absolute top. Everything works perfectly, but we did our best to just tidy up in here, tidy up some wiring. Uh, it's got a new radiator, new condenser, new AC compressor. We built the AC compressor bracket, all new AC lines and all that kind of good stuff. New battery, new battery terminals tie down. Um, and then we just did our best to keep all of our wiring nice and neat and tight. So again, nothing crazy complicated, nothing super fancy, but it is nice and it is super easy to work on. And if you win this thing and you need some parts, you're not gonna be absolutely screwed where you're like, oh, I don't know what's custom under here or what's not. Again, we want to make this as seamless as possible for the winner. So we kind of try our best to leave things passing smog and as factory as you can. So if you need parts, you just go to the parts store and ask for parts for an 81 Toyota pickup, not a big deal. Everybody loves a 22R or a 22RE. We went back and forth about doing the fuel injection swap and making it our own 22RE with a Holly Sniper two barrel. And as Sterling and I were flying out, it was like, okay, let's look at the money. How much is it gonna cost? Is it in the budget? And then we got in and we started it up in one crank and we were like, holy crap, this thing runs too good. So you're gonna be able to drive this thing all the way home not have any issues and so we said you know what let's put the money into other things making it nicer in other places all right let's uh let's just crank it up so you can hear it they're four cylinders you know they don't sound crazy good but let's start now this is no pump okay real time no gas pump i'm not going to pump the throttle nothing Quiet does what she's supposed to do. You know, nothing crazy, but she works. A GoPro in the window and we did our driving impressions so we're gonna plug in the video real quickly the driving impressions so you can see how it drove on city streets on the highway so uh here's that first things first let's talk about acceleration on this here little four-cylinder 22r little inline four engine the 22r is a notoriously awesome little four banger and uh you know it's not gonna win any drag races however truck's fun and uh does just fine and and you know you keep up with city driving well and uh it's great yeah I, you know it's it's an old school little carbureted engine and so kind of is what you'd expect but it is it is great and it will absolutely keep up and do phenomenally like it's in, in in traffic and gets on the freeway fine uh, the truck is very lightweight and so this is our third small truck giveaway the shitbox giveaways this is our third one i feel like it's just as fast as the comanche and the ranger and those were both six cylinder trucks so for a little four cylinder this thing is great seating position is comfortable like i'm six foot 200 pounds i've got plenty of headroom my legs are good my legs are comfortable so it's great and i have no like being my size i've got no gripes about it we drove Sterling and I drove five and a half hours straight in this bad boy, and I was comfortable the whole time, especially in the passenger seat. Like, you have all the leg room in the world. It's pretty great. It's pretty killer. On surface streets, this thing really shines. It does great. This is a great little daily. It's, it's nice and quiet here. A couple little rattles and stuff from, like, your, your spare tire kit and whatnot, but it's pretty quiet in here. Shifts through the gears perfectly. This is the five-speed transmission. So in 1981, from my research and what I found is that some 1981s came with a five-speed and some came with a four-speed, and then in 1982, all trucks came with a five-speed. But speaking of the previous owner, he said that this truck was a four-speed when he bought it, and then he swapped in the five-speed transmission. So I, I have no way of verifying that's true. That's just his word. He was a nice guy, so I believe him. Uh, but the five-speed is great. It's killer. The clutch is perfect. So it's got a new clutch rebuilt five speed actually and it drives excellently all the gears are perfect all the synchros are perfect and it just does everything that you would want it to do and more so it's so the transmission is just great it's quiet it's even quiet in reverse whereas a lot of these old school five speed manuals the reverse was really noisy and chattery uh, but this one's quiet in reverse even so it's great the, the the truck on surface streets like what we're doing right now uh, is great it's super happy third gear fourth gear and just does freaking killer 
one thing that I didn't know when I bought the truck was that it that it was a non-power steering truck. So I used to have this 1977 Chevy Love. It was a two-wheel drive Chevy Love, and uh, it was non-power steering, and it was a bear to turn the wheel. I was always nervous to buy another small truck with non-power steering, thinking, man, that thing was an arm workout all the time, even being such a little truck. And you know, with this thing being four-wheel drive, I was thinking, man, this is gonna be freaking miserable in a four-wheel drive truck to have non-power steering but everybody else in the shop has driven it and I'd say yeah it's pretty great for non-power steering They're like no way this thing's got power steering it steers so easy it's one-handed I'm like no this is a non-power steering truck and it does freaking great so you, you're not gonna be worried about that and then you don't get that loss of power from having power steering so yeah I, I, I wouldn't add power steering to it it drives perfectly and you get lots of feedback through the road so it's great a huge deal for me when it comes to classics is braking and braking feel. The brakes on this truck are so good. They're freaking awesome. Like, just like barely touching those brakes and they're grabbing. We rebuilt the rear drum, so so everything in the in the rear is new except for the drum itself, and that was good and didn't have any marring, but like all new pads and hardware and all that kind of stuff in the back. But the fronts were, were new from the previous owner, and so we didn't touch those. But this thing stops just on a freaking dime. It is great. Acceleration is good. Even with the air conditioning on, like you're fine. You just kind of gotta, you know, you gotta give that 22R the RPMs that it wants to get up to speed. You know, but these things, these 22Rs are so reliable. You run them till the, you know, you just run them forever and they're never gonna die. So I'm not really worried about wringing it out and doing any damage. They never overheat. Um, so they're just great. So I have no complaints there, but even with the air conditioning on, uh, it's fine and does totally fine. Maybe, you know, you want that extra little bit on the freeway to pass somebody. Maybe you turn off your AC to get that extra little horsepower back. But in all reality, I think it's just fine and it's doing great. But again, steering's great. Braking is super good, super confidence inspiring, which again, you get into an old truck and you don't have good brakes and you're like, you're like nervous to drive it. You don't want to drive it around. You don't want to, you, you know, you just look at it in the garage because it doesn't make you feel confident to drive it. But this thing is extremely confidence inspiring. So around the street, surface streets just does freaking killer. So now we're gonna cruise over to the freeway. So you can kind of hear on video how loud it is on the freeway. It's pretty stinking quiet. Uh, we fixed the vent windows and put these softer Milestar tires on here, which are way quieter. And so really the only things you're gonna hear are things from like the seat rattling around or just the rattles and the dingleberries that you have with old trucks, but it's pretty stinking quiet. Let's go run over the freeway and show you what that's like. It is hot in Vegas and we're getting on the freeway. Even with the air conditioning on, sitting here just chilling, idling, it is at 185 degrees. This thing will not overheat, it's great. So getting on the freeway now, rev the baby out a little bit, get him up to speed. See how he does. But we're on the freeway now, 70 miles an hour, doing freaking great actually. So quiet on the road and uh, you know, you're not listening to tires howl, you're not listening, you know, vent windows that are whistling like crazy at you. And uh, yeah, kind of the only the only whistling that we're getting is this driver door needs a little bit more alignment. If I peek my head in there, I see a little bit of daylight. So we're gonna align this driver door a little bit better. And then this thing's gonna be cherry and it's not gonna make any noise. It's gonna be watertight, airtight, and uh, it's pretty great. You know, I love all old trucks and uh, every old truck has its quirks and its goodness and everything. And like, I I know why people love these trucks. Like they're great freaking trucks and I've always wanted to own one. I've always wanted to have one and restore one. And for me, it's more fun to restore them than it is to own them. So like, I'm happy to, to have this one for a month or two and, and have my fun and let somebody else have it. So. But, but really, I can see why people, like, because of trucks like this, become like absolute Toyota aficionados where they just love them and they want to keep driving because they really are great. Um, you know, it's got its dingleberries like any other truck has, but for real, this thing is, this thing is killer. So now let's talk about suspension a little bit. You can see I'm getting bumped around a little bit as we're going over some rough construction areas here in Vegas. But for the most part, the suspension is good, not great. Uh, it is leaf sprung front and rear, and if you have a leaf sprung short wheelbase vehicle, um, even with nice Fox shocks like this thing has, you're kind of, you know, you're doing your best to just kind of ride, take the ride, and uh, it's okay. And uh, but it's not the worst classic I've ever driven. It's not the biggest bucking Bronco, but it's definitely not the best classic I've ever driven either. And there's just not a lot available out there for these trucks in the aftermarket. 
and when it comes to suspension so uh, and this is the hard part for us about giveaway trucks is like at what point do we draw the line at what point do we say you know we got to stop the giveaway build and start the giveaway we've talked about this before it's kind of a hard line to draw but you know do we have the time and budget to go in and do four link and, and make this thing you know ride like a modern truck no we don't so you know we do our best to upgrade the suspension with what we can and there will be other trucks that we, and there's other trucks we've given away that do have upgraded suspension all that kind of stuff but again every truck's different and the budget and the time frame is different on all these trucks so with this with that being said you know there's it's not within our means right now to go and do four link and all that kind of stuff and do i think it needs it no i don't I think this thing is fun to drive and fun to to be in, and, and you're not you're not going to walk out of it with back pain per se. But um, you know, when we when we get up to the trail, you'll see like you know it's it's it, it does not like washboard the most. Like washboard is really hard on this little guy. But once you once we kind of get out of the washboard, and you're just on a rocky trail or whatever. Like it does just fine and it's fun. But again, uh, every truck guy can could use improvements. But when it comes to city driving with this kind of suspension, it's actually pretty great because you're not having, a, you don't have any body roll. You're not freaked out on the highway. You're not like taking a left turn, like whoa, we're getting thrown over. None of that. So it's actually pretty good, and I, and I like it. I like it a lot for driving on the highway and driving on the driving in the city, driving on the roads, all that kind of stuff. It does pretty single good. Uh, but yeah, we're we're just made it up that grade in fourth gear. Um, I will say this thing, if it was geared better. Uh, would be a little faster and a little bit better. All right, we are out here at the trail and uh, let's see how she does. So, we got this little washboard section here. Like I said, does not love the washboard. But, as long as you're not in the washboards, she's fine. But, like I was saying before, the truck's not perfect off-road, but you know, if you're doing a little trail like this, it's fun. And, and yeah, you're getting bounced around a little bit. Again, it, it, it definitely does not like the washboard and you know our visors want to kind of fall down on us as we're driving through this stuff but it does good and these trucks are like little legendary off-roaders and people would modify these to the nines and do one foot axles and 40 inch tires like it's really common to see that kind of stuff on this platform i think people just love them and love making them even more off-road capable but for just going out and doing a little trail it's totally great as is when we build these giveaway trucks we expect people to enjoy them, to drive them, to take them out, to maybe do a couple trails, but we really don't build them with the expectation that you're gonna go out and go rock crawling right away. You know, if you wanna make this into a rock crawler, you win this truck, then by all means do so. Uh, it is your truck to rock crawl out um, and to make your own. But however, that's not how we build them. We build them to be nice, fun, cool dailies that you can take out, do a little trail like this and have a good time. But again, we're out of the washboard now. We're just trying to end up some bigger whoops and everything. And it does fine, you know? You hit some rocks and, and you know, bounces around a little bit. But I don't feel like I'm getting just like, you know, destroyed right now. But I think the GoPro, because the GoPro is mounted to the windshield, probably looks like we're getting destroyed right now. But the thing's fun. I'm having a good time. So, again, it's not, it's not the, the most, uh, it's not the most off-road capable truck we've given away. I will say it is a nicer and better truck than the Comanche that we gave away. And I really liked our Comanche. I thought our Comanche was freaking cool. Um, but this is this is nicer and a better truck than the Comanche. But off-road wise, I think the, the Comanche was a, was a much better off-roader. It had three link at the front end and all that kind of stuff, which, which made it off-road better. But this thing's comfortable. AC is doing great, keeping up even off-road, like at low speed like this, AC is still blowing cold and the truck's still not gonna overheat on you, even off-road, might get up to 190, 195, but it's always doing great. So we'll go up this trail a little bit longer, see if we get stuck. But this truck gets a little hairy, especially in spots like this, but the truck's still in two-wheel drive, it's gonna do just fine. Four-wheel drive works excellently on the truck too, so that's fun. And if you ever do get stuck, you'll be able to get yourself unstuck pretty easy. But again, even with no power steering, off-road just does great, kicks butt. So. I like it, and I think it is a great little off-roader. We're gonna turn back around now, head back to the shop. But uh, for now, that's it for the driving impressions. Hope you guys like this part and uh, enjoy the rest of the video. With all that being said, that's it for this video and for this walk around. If you love this truck and you want a chance to win it, go enter on hotsandmotors.com from now until August 20th at midnight. I love this truck. I love every truck we give away. They're all so freaking cool, but I have always said that it's one of my top five favorite classic trucks 
definitely my, my favorite small truck is this era Toyota pickup. It's so cool, it's so attractive with the big fenders, the toyish proportions, the short bed, it's super, super, super cool. So I love this truck and whoever wins, they're gonna love it too. It's, a, it's an asset that's gonna just continue to appreciate year after year. We see prices on these things going up every single year. Prices have never dropped on them. So they're just an absolute collector's piece. They're really cool. And I can't wait to see who wins it. So uh, if you like this video, make sure you subscribe here. Check out whatever else we're giving away in the future. If you're watching this video before August 20th, get in. Don't wait around, don't miss your chance. Get something nice that you like on the site. Our shirts fit great. Everybody loves them. Our hats are great quality hats. Tools are great from Crescent, Gear Wrench, and Nebo, and True. And, We've got all sorts of good stuff on there. So go on, get something good, get in to win this bad boy, and we might be calling your name in August for you to fly into Las Vegas and drive this bad boy home. So again, thanks for watching this video, and we'll catch you on the next one. See ya.